a lot of these subject matters that we've been touching on tie in with one another. They really tie in. There's, there's a thread that connects a lot of these issues together. And the best way that we feel guided in the Holy Spirit to present this is in a, a, a topical theme. And we're going to try, um, we're, we're going to do it to our best ability to address some of these topical issues. Now, behind this we have the Freud of, the Freud of July. So hopefully, either, either we would post this before this video, or if we don't post this particular video on the 4th of July, get it because it will be a continuation. What we're doing now will be a continuation to this basic theme, the 4th of July. And we, we left off on, like, uh, liberty. We talked about liberty. We talked about freedom. All right? So what is, biblically speaking, what is what is liberty? What is liberty? Now we have liberty as sons and daughters of Jah, as sons and daughters of God. But first of all, what is the qualification for sonship and daughtership, in other words, to be a child of God? Well, the qualifications is very clear and direct. The gospel of the Wengel, the good news of His Majesty, is very clear about that. And this is particular in this particular document, we seek to address some of those basic issues. This book one, we seek to address some of the basic issues concerning the good news of His Majesty, including the teachings of His Majesty concerning the Bible and concerning faith in Yeshua HaMoshiach, which is at the crux or the cross of the matter, the crux of the matter, all right? And when you come to that particular crossroads in your particular life, when you begin to recognize, you understand, the, the law of the Spirit of Christ, which is the true law of God, that is moving in your head and your heart as you're growing in the knowledge of Yeshua HaMoshiach versus the law of the flesh. In other words, something when a systemic anomaly occurred as the Matrix movie points this out. And that systemic anomaly was Chat-Yat. We call it Chat-Yat in the Ge'ez, Bamarinya, the Afro-Shemitic. And that word basically means sin in the English. It's translated as sin. But to clarify what sin really is, sin, according to etymology of the word chatiyat, it means missing the mark. It means a loss. It's like when you say hit or miss. And so sin is not a hit, but it's a miss. You, you understand? So if you miss the mark of God in truth, in other words, if you miss the truth, then you've sinned. If you're in ignorance, you're, you've sinned. So the original sin was ignorance. The original sin is very, very clear. It was ignoring what the truth said and what the true God said. You know what I'm saying? And going after a deception. You know what I'm saying? Going after a lie. And this has only compounded the spiritual interest. In other words over time. Now, in this particular vid right here, saying what I've said so far, what I would like to address in this particular video, I think it's very important to address this, is first of all, let us go to Isaiah 51 and 2. Let us begin off at Isaiah 51 and 2. We said we want to make this topical. So what will the topic of of, of this particular of this particular part be we want to call this Abba's love. Abba's love and experiencing the Father's love. You understand for what? Jah for God so loved the world that he did what? He he gave his only begotten son. Now some folks find it hard to really accept that because there's been so much of lies. And we touched on John 10 and 10, which says that with Christ himself, Yeshua said, those who have come before 
him are thieves and robbers because they have sought to steal glory, you understand, from the true King of Kings, you understand, from the true King of Kings, right, and from Yeshua HaMoshiach, the true Lord of Lords, you understand, and from the Divine Mother, you understand, and by extension, that is the black woman. And if you look at the whole Adam and Eve thing from newborn eyes, it becomes abundantly evident and clear. But so many of us have been traumatized and pre-packaged, programmed by white supremacy, by this white washing, by the lies and all the image and, and following people and not the word. So one's really don't know what the truth is. But they have to know the truth for themselves. Now, here it says right here, it's speaking about how Israel is to be redeemed. And the downpresses are to be punished. It says, hearken to me. Shema, hear, O Israel. Shema, Yisrael. Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad. Hear, O Israel. The Lord thy God is one. Right? It says, hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness. Now, our righteousness, and we have to clarify this. What is I and I righteousness? And this is probably one of the fundamental misunderstandings within Christianity generally, but in the world. What, what is righteousness? If you look at the word righteousness from a legal or so-called legalistic interpretation, it's being in a right relationship. In other words, it's like if you're, you haven't been convicted of a crime, legally speaking, you are righteous or in right relationship. You understand? And we're speaking about temporal law, worldly law, state law, governmental law. If you never went to prison or been convicted of a crime or felony, you are basically, quote, righteous in your citizenship or in your freedoms and liberties in that particular governmental system. Right? Now, in God's government, in Jah's government, you understand? All are guilty because of Adam. Now, the true Adam is the black man. The true Haywan or Eve is the black woman. And we're going to the very root, the very Ethiopic Hebrew foundations of the ancient so-called mythology or the story that we even have codified in the Hebrew overstanding here in the Bible because we are Hebrews, or more correctly to our nationality, Ethiopian Hebrews. So it says right here, hearken to me ye that follow after righteousness. So our righteousness, what brings us into righteousness is accepting you, all right, accepting Christ, receiving Christ, receiving his word. In faith, you understand? In faith. You see, we really have to understand this. And then developing and growing in that relationship. This is why Galatians says that the law or Torah is our schoolmaster. So it's not Torah that makes us righteous. Not how much you read Torah that makes us righteous. Those watching this um, Christian brother, I consider him a brother, Joseph Prince. One of my few, I would say favorite, um, Bible, biblical Christian preachers out there from Singapore. One thing that really interests me about him is that when he teaches the Bible, he'll go to the Hebrew roots, the Hebrew words, and to explain the gospel in a practical, applicable way. You understand? Um, and... As a Gentile, a non-Israel or Ethiopian Hebrew, he is in that righteousness and is communicating and preaching and ministering that word. So I was, I was listening to a program of his, and he said something interesting that many folks, there's many even preachers who say they've been preaching this Bible before they were born again. 
In other words, that they were preaching the truth of this Bible and what they've learned and what they could admit as true in this Bible, but before they were born again, because they did not even come to that understanding of what does it mean to be born again and, 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 and acting on that in faith. You understand? In faith. And we've been trying to explain that word faith because it gets so misconstrued either as belief. Some places it's translated as belief. Some places as faith. Um, some places as, 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 as admitting in a sense, like, like in the amen sense, as yea or an affirmative, so forth and so on. But when he says that, I said, that's interesting. Because even myself, even as a Rastafari, I would say that in in, in kind of spirit, I was born again because I was, I, 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 was, I was in that conception process. But then when I read and heard His Majesty speak about the Bible, speaks about why, what made Him want to follow Christ. And then as I started to study the Bible and find out that, wow, it's nothing that we do, even as Rastafari, that makes us righteous. It's not the doing of any ritualistic so-called works. It's like when the 12 tribes of Israel said, the organization Rastafari, they said that um, um, greetings, um, greetings this day in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as they revealed in the person of Hala Selassie the first, king of kings, conquering the line of the tribe of Judah. You understand that we, the, the, the 12 tribes of Israel, that our faith is not about writs or rights, but it's essentially, essentially a function. It's essentially a function of the heart. Now, when you open that biblically, and one thing I, I, I say, I say hallelujah and amen to the 12 tribes, I hope they keep this up, is that Bible study and practice, you, you know, and, and, and that faith in, in the Father, you understand, and in his number one son our black Lord and Savior, Shua HaMoshiach. And this is why I feel that this part of this kind of um, um, series of, of topical teachings is so very important on who is our righteousness as Rastafari. According to the gospel of His Imperial Majesty, it's our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in word and in deed. You understand? But the Bible you understand, it's very, very important. We must study and show ourselves approved to God as a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing or explaining the word of truth. So, once again, here in Isaiah chapter 51, where it speaks about Israel is to be redeemed. What is redeeming? What is redemption? Redemption, redeeming is buying back. You remember, look to Africa where a black man will be crowned king, in him you will find the Redeemer, or as Marcus Garvey would reinterpret it, um, look to Africa where a black man will be crowned king, the day of redemption is near. You understand? So the connection of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Haile Selassie the first, and our redemption, you understand, as a people, as the Beta Israel, the once lost but now found black sheep of the Beta Israel, is very, very important. And the whole Ethiopian Hebrew connection, it is both factual, is real, is biblical, and we need to know the half of the story that had been suppressed and not taught to us. So Israel, we as the once lost but now found, are to be redeemed. Scripturally, biblically, that could not happen unless there was a kinsman redeemer on the throne of David. Now we see the connection between Ethiopia, King Solomon, the, the kingdom of David being renewed in the highlands of Ethiopia. And then we can even start to look at certain um, historical things and through, through the Holy Spirit see it, the Isla Iret, see it in its fullness. Like... When Christ was born, when Yeshua was born, he was just a poor, a poor black youth, as Reverend Jeremiah Wright so accurately stated it. You, you all might have heard it, but did you really receive it? See, when you're born again and you hear that, it's a whole other level that you get out of it. 
You know, like when you know about something or you're into something and somebody says something, you can see different levels of it that others, it goes in one ear, it goes out the next ear. They don't really get it. You'll think that their hearts and their minds are else. They're following other things. They're following the unrighteousness of the world. They're not hearing God's word. You understand? They're not reading it. You understand? They're not studying it. They're not memorizing it. Therefore, they can't really meditate on the word. Yovas and 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 get the treasure, the treasure, the living treasure, the living water, doesn't come out of that rock. You understand? So it says, "Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness." So our righteousness, Yeshua Hamoshia, Yesus Christos, in spirit and in truth, is our righteousness. You all right? Ye that seek the Lord, you seek Yahweh, you seek Jah. Look to the rock. Whence you are hewn, look to the rock that you were like cut from, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged, and to that hole that you came, that you came out. It says, "Look to Abraham, verse two, your father, who is our father, Abraham, Abraham, not not Abraham Lincoln, no, it's just a counterfeit right there." Then you get into the emancipation and all that kind of crazy stuff. It has nothing to do with our redemption. We're a people that need redemption. Black people in the Americas and the Caribbean. Not emancipation, not to be made over as property. That's the problem. You know what I'm saying? Because my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. They go on in their sin, in their ignorance, in their ignorance or ignorantness. It says, look to Abraham, the black Abraham, the black Assyrian, your father, and to Sarah, or Sarah, that bear you. For I called him alone, called him alone, right? Called him and blessed him and increased and increased him. For the Lord, the King of kings and his Christ, shall comfort Zion. What is our, what is Zion, what does Zion mean to us? See, people hear this and they look to the counterfeit. So they're looking out there to that, to that coastline rock they call the state of Israel. And they say, oh, that is it. No, it's not the Zion that the Almighty is speaking of. The Zion is the African Zion. Because remember, Zion was the castle of David. See, so we have to understand that's the palace of his majesty. Let us overstand, because the throne of David is there. This is the reality. The only reason why most folks can't get it because they are suffering from, from Gentile uh, uh, anti-Christ depressant. You know, the Gentiles got them all confused, mixed up and confused. For the king of kings shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness which is actually a covert word for Ethiopia, if you understand it from the Psalms and the Bible, says it make her wilderness like the Eden, like Eden. Now, Eden is all connected with Ethiopia in the beginning. And also throughout the scriptures, we have these cryptic verses that speaks either of Ethiopia, the Queen of the South, Yeshua HaMoshiach, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, even is pointing to that. And her desert, like the garden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Now, whether you want to look at the desert being the Sahara, or you want to look at the desert being Arabia, between the two you have Ethiopia. You understand? It says, joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Hearken to me, my people. So he shares something in common with us. As the king of kings says, I am the king of all the so-called Negro people in the world. He was redeeming us, buying us back to himself. You know what I'm saying? Not making us, you know what I'm saying? But demonstrating that word of God if our ancestors then and if we now would only receive, would only Kabbalah it. It says, and give ear to me, O my nation. We are a nation. We are a nation of people. You know, an Honorable Elijah Muhammad tried to tell you people. He said, you're the tribe of Shabazz. But he used that as a great tribe. Because that means a great tribe. You know what I'm saying? We still were getting up from the gutter. You know what I'm saying? We barely got on the sidewalk. And we still were struggling to stand upright. You know what I'm saying? But now is a new day for a law 
shall proceed from me. The first constitution in human history that was freely given to a people was given by our Godfather, the King of Kings, Kedamawi Haile Shalase, Haile Selassie the first. There's a link there, the Fitta Neges. You can make that link. For a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. You remember when His Majesty spoke before the League of Nations? And how the world at that time, they said, after the fact, if we only listen to Haile Selassie the first, then he spoke before the, the United Nation and said about 27 or so years before, I gave a warning that was ignored. Now we're moving into this particular time when the warning that he gave in the, what was it, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the 60s, Right in the 60s, the ultimate challenge until the philosophy, all those warnings he gave were coming to the time right now where they have not listened. And again, human, the surviving humanity is going to say, Haile Selassie warned us twice, and, and, and humanity do not listen. All this was because of their ignorance. You understand? Not following in the way of the true Christ, of the black Messiah. Instead, they, th they, 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 they became antichrist to stop the rise of the black king of kings. My righteousness is near. My salvation has gone forth. Yeshua has gone forth. Mine arms shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me, and on mine arm th shall they trust. Some interpret this, some of our brethren, I remember interpret that the Isles, because they saw that connection of Rastafari and Ethiopia, even with the Caribbean and Jamaica, you understand, where that light came forward, where it's like they received this, just like it says right here, where it says the Isles, the Isles shall wait, right, shall wait for me. Now, this whole chapter is very, very interesting because this is speaking about our redemption. It says, lift up your eyes to the heavens. Now, there's a whole, oh, there's so many heavenly signs that are being shown in this time. We try to highlight a couple of them, but the word said, lift up your eyes to the heavens. That's why we published the wisdom, um, the witness of the stars. You understand, know by E.W. Bullinger. And then in that book, we found there was a prophecy there concerning 1892, and he even connects that with certain celestial signs connected with the coming of the Son of Man. And boom, Lich Tefari, there he is. There he was born. It says, Ethiopia, this man was born there. This is right there in your Bible, but people want to ignore that. You understand? Know and they ignore that to their own detriment. But he is saying, lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath, for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke. Isn't this interesting? The heavens, it sounds a lot like what Revelation says. You know in the book of Revelation where it says that the heavens shall roll up like a scroll? In this right here, it says that the heavens shall vanish away like smoke. The earth shall wax old like a garment. Is this global warming? What they've been lying to us saying, oh, this is global warming. They're destroying the earth. Is that what, y'all are, are corrupt and, and polluters. But the earth is waxing old like a garment. And they that dwell in shall die in like manner. Isn't that interesting? What's happening with humanity in this very time that we're in, the whole 2012, but I tell ye. Not 2012, you're already here. What about 2013 to come? Think about that. 2012 seems to be the warning. You know, saying 2013 and beyond, that seems to be the time that a lot of these judgments, the trumpets, you know, the, the vials, the plagues, I mean, it's not what we want, but it's we, we, we identify. I mean, we want John will to be done. You know, saying, but we know that, you know, John, tell us right here, what do you think? You, you all who want the, the last day, what you think it's going to be? Light? You think it's going to be bright lights and everything, like, like they lied to you? The Philharmonic Orchestra is going to come from, from out of space or something? You know, it ain't going to be like that. It's a day of darkness, a day of woe-yo. But here's the good news. My salvation 
shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Haile Selassie I declared to I and I his righteousness. His righteousness is our righteousness, is Yeshua Ha Moshiach. He declared to us the way, the truth, and the life. He confirmed that word in real time. He visited every nation, and it, like the Bible says, God shall shew his salvation. He shall visit all nations. That's in the Bible. He shall visit all nations. You understand? Not just in a general way, you understand, but in a very personable way. And this has happened in these last days and times. So his salvation is forever. Yeshua is forever. My righteousness, Yeshua, shall not be abolished. His right, that righteousness that brings us into his righteousness, which is by faith. You understand? First is to receive. Let's put this up here for you all to, to, to get this down. We've, we've taught on this, but this is not just like a one-up subject matter. This is a continual subject matter that needs to be built on. The first thing is to receive. All right, let's put this right here. The first thing is to re re receive. Right now, receive is interesting because receive in the Hebrew is to Kabbalah. Some of you all know that I say there's a Kabbalah of the Jews who call themselves Jews, and there's a true Kabbalah. We like to call our Ethiopic Kabbalah because the word Ebele, Ebele, right, means to receive. This means to receive in the Afro-Shemitic. The first thing is to receive Yeshua, you understand, and to have faith or to have Amen. Right? To have our name. Remember, Christ says this is his name. He is the Amen. He is the true Amen. All right? That's why, that's why he says, Egypt is my people. Remember in the prophets, he says, Egypt is my people. But many of his people, we know from our example, have gone astray. You understand? Know and as a righteous God, as a righteous God, he must be the justifier as well as the judger. That means he must condemn when condemnation needs to be. You understand? Otherwise, he'll be unrighteous. You understand? So people can ignore the good news of the King of Kings. They can ignore Rastafari, but they cannot ignore the consequences. You see, they cannot ignore the consequences of their ignorance. And then is to see the, the, the reception. You know, first you have that reception. It's like with a TV or electronics or the Internet. If you don't get reception, he's not going to pick up a clear stream. So the first thing is that you have to connect. You have to receive. Do you receive? You understand? Or are you deceived? See, are you deceived or do you receive? Are you deceived or do you receive Yeshua Ha Moshia? Right? And then the relationship. See, the relationship. You know, relationship is very important. Even Christ taught the disciples. He says that, he says to the disciples, when any have faith in his word, he speaks about how the Father and the Son will come and sup with them. And let me just share this from the word with you. Hopefully I can find this in this word right here with you. I don't know if I highlighted it, but it's, it's, it's here in the scripture. You understand? He talks about how the Father and the Son will sup with such a one. You understand? The Father and the Son will sup with that one just through the receptivity, right? Just to the receptivity of the Word. You see? So the receptivity of the Word is very, very important. It's like when one came to Yeshua and asked, you know, and asked for certain healing. And he, and he said, do you have faith that I can? And he said, yes, I, yes, yes, I do. One had to receive it. You know what I'm saying? One had to be able to receive it. And see, reception and faith, it goes beyond just, um, say, reading the Bible. But you, you see, because reading the Bible is important. Reading the Bible is definitely important because it's there we're getting the important logistics, you know, we're getting the logistics that which we should um, 
that which we should um, meditate, that which we should meditate upon. But he said that when we receive his word, you understand, know when we receive his word, then the Father and the Son sups with that one. The Father and the Son makes their home with and within that one. And so when we're talking about spirituality, you understand, know I mean, true spirituality, and this is not no just modern thing, this is the, this is, this is the way. It's not a so-called new way, you understand. Know it's a new covenant you understand that the Father has graciously given us in and through our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, but it's not a new way in the sense like that, that um, it never existed before. And, that, and this is where the name Amen comes in, comes in very, very, um, comes in as an eye-opener, you understand, as a, as a real... I open up right there. Uh, give me one moment because maybe it was in Matthew that I actually saw this in. But um, it's throughout, you know, throughout the scripture. There's some other things I want to go through right here, and then I come back to this because he speaks about the Jews. He's talking about the Jews that do believe, because we always get the impression that all the Jews rejected him. You, you know, that's a Gentile misunderstanding. That's a Gentile misunderstanding. That's when you're in a in a in a in a Gentile in a Gentile sort of a, you know a Gentile sort of a mind. Okay, the Jews did not believe that. The Jews took up stone. The Jews went. Let's see. Um, the men of the Jews. These men being. Let's see. The Jews wait on him. Uh, okay, right here. Salvations of the Jews. Um, Believe not, but to those who did believe on him. Okay. Uh, the poet among the Jews. You know what's interesting I noticed is that is that some of the some of the areas in the gospel actually don't speak on the don't really say the Jews in there, the other some of the other uh um okay, twelve I think it's on twelve. All right. Okay, yes, he's still there. All right, 12. Let's go here. So there's a certain order. So reading, see, praise and worship, or Isis, as we as Rastafari are wont to do, you understand, is very good. But praise and worship in itself, you understand, is not all, is not all that there is to it. That's, that, you can call that step, you know, you can call that step one. Right, step one, we can call it the, you know, the praise and 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 worship, you know, the praise and worship part. You know, was um, is step one, right? But then there's also the reading, the reading of the Bible. You understand? But then it's still very important to experience the results, to experience the word, to know the truth for yourself. You know, so when Christ says to us. He speaks about, when they ask him about what is the work, you know, there was this whole, I don't want to say con, uh, controversy, but a controversy concerning um, what is the work. And Christ tells us very simply um, that the work, basically the work is to have faith, right, to have faith in the one who has been sent, that the real work is to have faith. Or the Bible says, the, the James translation says to believe. You understand? It says to believe. Um, okay, I, I think I passed those eight, excuse me, eight. And because I haven't highlighted this like I probably should have. But eight and um, chapter eight is at verse uh, 31. Verse 31. So let's put this up here. John 8 and 31, right? John Eight and thirty-one. You understand? It's not. It was a. It was a religious element. It was like the religious element. The people were very superstitious about their religion, like a lot of the Negroes are now. If your preacher or pastor said, "Yes, we all bait to Israel, the Ethiopian connection," so if they said that next Sunday, y'all would get it. Y'all be like, "Hey, you was right about it." You understand? But 
if all the same evidence the preacher will present to you is given to you, you do not have that, that faith in, in God in yourself to look at the evidence and allow the Spirit of God to have you weigh it, you understand, in your clear conscience. You understand, without any other, you understand, without any other um, obligation. You understand, other than to know the truth and to seek the truth. You understand, not for bias or whatever else. But it says, and, and he spake these words, and many believed, or many amen, many amen on him. Instead of saying believe, we should say amen, to really rewrite this in our mind, because we've heard so much, be like Eve, be like Eve. Then we find that Eve, um, the primordial black woman, the Ethiopian woman in that sense, or, or the feminine side of humanity was deceived. And today what we're seeing is the, is the bad fruit fully grown of that deception. You understand, in the fallen nature of so-called woman or woman. Verse 31 says, Then said Yeshua to the Jews, which believed, which are maimed, which are maimed on him which accept him as he is. They accept the truth. They say, it is what it is. When Christ spoke, they're like, it is what it is. There was no if, and, buts, or doubts about it. Christ said to them, if ye continue in my word. Notice that continue means it's not like a stop and a start or, you know, stop, start. No, if ye continue, if you are consistent in my word. Whose word? The word of the pastor, the word of the preacher, the word of the religious denomination. Denom no. He said, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. If we stay in Yeshua's testimony, his word, isn't that the gospel of his majesty? Isn't that what his imperial majesty is telling to us sons and daughters? Why? Because he's speaking towards our rebirth, our new birth, our being born again. He's giving us the basic instructions and the basic elementals, you understand? And this is why the true teaching of his majesty, the true gospel of his majesty, as Bob even said, the Honorable Burhana Selassie said, give us the teaching of his majesty, ka we na wa, no devil's philosophy. You understand? There's a lot of philosophies out there. You understand? But we want the teaching, we want the truth. We need to know the truth, the knowledge of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. So he says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. It is interesting that it's at this particular, in this context, does Yeshua say this? We always hear, you should know the truth. Everybody's like, you should know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You can learn all the stuff about the Illuminati, the New World Order, what they were going to do, what they thought about doing, what they didn't do yet, what they do doing, and all this kind of stuff. You're saying, but that ain't going to help you in the real world. People talk about, oh, in the real world. Everybody's trying to get real world, but there's no, there's no spirituality that's overcoming of that. You understand? Because all of them have gone after a lie. But here Yeshua is saying to the Jews or the Judeans or the Judahites, the ones of Judah, Yehuda, in other words, who do our main, accept him as his word. Accept him at his word. You know what I'm saying? Um, he says to them, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And there's a semicolon. That's verse 31. Verse 32, and ye shall know the truth. So the process of knowing the truth is the word of Yeshua, is the word of Yesus. You understand? Is in the testimony of Yesus. This is what leads us into the truth. And I'm not talking about Jesus and your pastor, or Jesus and your preacher, or your no Yeshua and Yeshua alone. Period. Yeshua. And you know, so interesting is that when Christ, when he made his high priestly prayer. For his disciples, he even says, I, I'm not, I don't give a F about the world. Or people say, oh, he didn't say give a F. Basically what he's saying is I'm not praying for the world. I'm praying for my, my, my brothers and sisters whom my father has given me out of the world. See, that keeps us focused. 
not all over the place. You understand? Uh, chapter 17 of John, these words spake Yeshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, and that thy son also may glorify thee. Honor your son. Glorify your son. So your son may glorify and honor you. And thou hast given him power, or we can say authority, over all, over all flesh. And, and you see, when we read that there, let me just put this here, hold this page. When we read that there, we just think, oh, we're talking about over people. No, but, but everything pertaining to our carnal life, you understand, whether it is to our body, whether it's to our health, whether it's to our state of mind, whether it's even to our finances, you understand, there's a relationship that one must develop, and it begins with the word. It begins with the word. You understand? And in that word and in that relationship, we come into the knowledge, you understand, of the truth. We know what the truth is. I'm talking about the, uh, the truth. The truth is the truth is the truth. Right? So he's been given power, authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life. So who gets it? You know, people talk about there's a lot of ways to get to God, and this is probably the biggest end time deception that there is. You understand? You have to ask yourself, how come white man has gone so far from Christianity? I mean, think about it for a moment. He's been doing a lot of stuff in Christianity. It seems as soon as the white man became Christian, on a certain level in the material world and in, in the, the, you know, g gaining power, he became great when he became a Christian. And now all of a sudden, like after World War II and in the 60s, it's like he's going after all these strange gods and his system is just collapsing on him, he don't see the connection. You understand? The connection's in Yeshua. Yamadish. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So you see the relationship right here? We say, His Majesty is I and I Father. Now, if that is true for I and I, and then our father, Edomari Hannah Selassie, says to I and I that, that it is about Christ, Yeshua, following Christ, the Bible, you know what I'm saying, and growing in that knowledge of the Son of God, you know, which gives us, which gives us overcoming in this world and grace in this world and overcoming and, and blessing and barakat in the world to come. You know what I'm saying? And we're not talking about no pie in the sky, but the earth is jazz and the fullness thereof. You know what I'm saying? This is why the, the heathen and sheathen are trying to run off the earth. They're trying to go into outer space. They're looking up into heaven, and they're wondering about what is coming from heaven. Why? You understand? Know what, what should be coming from heaven? But judgment according to the scripture. But here the relationship is that as many as Abba, has given to Yeshua, you know what I'm saying? These, Yeshua now, has been given authority to give them eternal life. And when you understand Kabbalah and, and the tree of life in Yeshua, then the Kabbalah, the Kabbalistic tree, then is on. You see, a lot of folks are studying it with kind of a half-civilized and half-original knowledge concerning Yeshua because they're denying that Ethiopic root. You know what I'm saying? They're denying I and I language, the root. You know what I'm saying? They're going after the Hebrew, which is a good step. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, that step will lead them, you know what I'm saying, to make that full step, you know what I'm saying, and get to the root of the truth. And this is life eternal. This is what? Life eternal. What is life eternal? He says this is life eternal, that they might know. There's no way it says right here that they might believe. It doesn't say that they might believe, right, believe, believe thee, the only true God. I believe in God. No, the Bible is saying that they might know. But your preacher tells you that you might believe. Belief, in the, in the true sense, is admitting as true. You know what I'm saying? But you have to come to that point that you know what you admit, that if what you admit is the truth or not. So, so that, that is... That, that is having that true 
living experience. So one becomes a living sacrifice. You know, so not a dead sacrifice, but a living sacrifice in spirit and in truth. So he says, this is eternal life, that they might know, that they might know thee, the only true God. I find it interesting there that it says they might know thee, the only true God, which implies that there are other gods, but they're not true gods. They're false gods. Like we wanted to actually do a next vid on evolution. Evolution is a false religion. And Charles Darwin is a false god. You know what I'm saying? And need I say racist too? His book, what? Origin of Species. Have you looked at the original title? Origin of Species. Then it says um, the, the preservation of the favored races in the struggle for life. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. The, favor, the favored races? And you see how the whole eugenics thing is wound up into that. Then you hear even your president talk about he's evolving. And now the evolution is complete. This is what, this is like a devolution, not an evolution in a true upward progression. But remember, that's not my religion. That's their religion, evolution. So evolution is a false god, a false religion. But some people believe that they are going to evolve into gods. They're going to evolve stages gradually becoming gods. But what does the true God say? The true God said we are sons and daughters of God. You see, the devil, Satan, or the adversary, according to the Bible, um, Lucifer, or Halal HaShahar, he said that he will, he will, he will, he will, he will do all these things. He's using his will, not making his will obedient to good influence, but he's using his will, you understand, his psychic power and ability to do all these things in defiance of God, but against who? Not really against God directly, indirectly, but directly against the black man, the fallen black man, the Adam, the one who's still living according to Adam. You know, like Adam and Eve were put in a perfect situation in the garden. Then a, then a snake, a reptile deceives them. That's like niggas being in Africa, and now we're over here in apartments and in this filth and squalor and second, third, shitty sin class crazy shit, you understand, police brutality, um, unemployment, broken families, and they say, we come from Africa, and then you see Africa, this big, 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 that's a big a couple of times, some more times it needs to be said too, continent, and then they, 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 the Chinese, the Asians, the Europeans, the Americans, they all want an investment there, and keeping us on welfare lines over here. We must be like Adam and Eve. Uh, you know, if you, if you are able to overstand it, get out of whitewash. You understand? Get out of their Renaissance paintings. And just get to the word, the fact of it. And then meditate and look at the reality. And ask God to give you wisdom to see this in real time. You understand? That you may have life eternal. That you might know the only true God. The only true job the only true God, and Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Whom thou hast sent. Now, this is very, very important. This is very important. When we look at Ethiopian Christianity, Ethiopian Christianity was not brought in there by no white man. I mean, that's, that's biblical. And then we see in the Old Testament that Solomon and Sheba and the Ark of the Covenant and the throne of David, the kingdom of David being renewed in Ethiopia. Wow. And Negroes still reject that. That means they deserve to get what they, what they get. They made their choice. You understand that? You can choose to follow them or as, as Isaiah 51 said, you can choose to follow what? You can choose to follow righteousness. You understand? Know Follow our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, to the glory of our God and Father, the King of Kings, Kedemawi Haile Selassie. Haile Selassie first. Yovis. Now, some might not be able to get this, but let's go on for a little bit right here. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self. It's interesting that Christ says this. Christ is saying, glorify me with your own self, with your own self. 
Not give me some glory from some place or create glory from me, but glorify me with your own presence. So when you hear the 12 tribes say greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this day revealed in the person of Haile Selassie, the first of Ethiopia. And then when you have an honest, not some psychopathic, demonic, polluted, kind of plugged in, entity to the beast that you show the evidence and still they, they have like, you know, some folks don't get it and I don't know why you even arguing with them. You have to just be on your guard. You understand? Know because they have some, they have a demon, you know, on them because they can't get the truth and they seem to have a, a, a malice of forethought against the king of kings. You understand? Know that means they are like demonic controlled entities. We don't know what sort of blood oaths they have done, what sort of little witchcraft, what sort of agreements they have to renounce. They need Yeshua. You know what I'm saying? They don't need to know anything about His majesty. They need to know about Yeshua in spirit and in truth. You know what I'm saying? And if they can't know that, well, what can we say? That's, that's not our business. And then he says, and now, O Father, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So wait, 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 wait. Before the world was, Christ is saying that he had a glory with the Father. And he's saying to the Father, glorify me with your own presence. It's kind of interesting when Christ says, they shall see me, you shall see me, but not see me. You know, like he's, you shall see. And, and when the whole thing about is Haile Selassie Christ, is he Jesus or is he Christ in the sense that David was a Christ, David was a Messiah, David was a king, David was anointed, David was of this lineage? In what sense? There is that enigma, you understand? And this is the enigma of the Trinity. But the Ethiopians have explained this in the, the doctrine, the Tawahedo, the teachings, you understand, concerning that which are biblically based. And this is just another example. This is just another example right here that it is... Um, that is biblically based. He says, I have manifested thy name to the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest me them, and they have kept thy word. Once again, we have this link with keeping, the keeping of the word. So we want to reinforce on this teaching, this teaching right here, Abba's love. You understand? Abba's love. You understand? What is, the, what is Abba's love? Right? Abba's love, the Father's love, is Jesus Christos. Is the Jesus or Yeshua. You understand? Yeshua is the Father's love. Is the Father's love made manifest. But the key, right? But the key, check it out. The key is that it is word. Now, see, there are ten words that are the key, in a sense, these ten words. It's interesting, this whole thing about ten words, because this is what I originally wanted to touch on, the whole thing about the so-called ten commandments. There's a certain un overstanding that we need to overstand about the ten commandments, because when the Bible talks about law, a lot of pastors and preachers, they will say, yeah, that's the ten commandments, that's the ten commandments. And I'm like, wow. That's deep. That's, that's kind of ignorant there. Because in my Hebrew New Testament, it says, when it says law, it says Torah. So Torah, you understand, we have the five books that are the five books of the Torah. But the ten words is what the Almighty spoke. You understand? That's what's often misunderstood as the ten commandments and often confused and confounded. You know what I'm saying? With that, you know, the Ten Commandments is his righteous, you know what I'm saying? His righteous, how should we say? His righteous will is the righteous will of God. But man, the Israelites especially at that time and even us, are not able to live that because of the systemic anomaly caused by Adam. Now, people, how can I explain this to you in another way? It's like, suppose your father, right, was a slave, right? And so he was beat, he was worked, he was robbed for all his life. He was a smart man, he had a lot of potential, but because of his color, his kind, he was treated with 
with great um, a demonic hostility, you know, saying by people because of the color of his skin or the texture of his hair or, or, or some other some other evil factor. So he dies, right? What sort of inheritance would you have? What sort of inheritance would you have in that situation, in that society? You probably would have to walk in his shoes. You understand? So it's something that you did not do. You understand? Let's say your father was a criminal. You understand? And he committed some grievous crime against the state, against the king. Right? And although you don't agree with what he did, you still love your daddy. You understand? Would the state still look at you as suspect because of what your daddy did? And you never, you're not going to speak out about it. You think that he was wrong. They treated him too harsh, even though what he did threatened to undermine the state or the government. You understand? So in, in, in such a situation as that, because you do not speak out, because you continue even in his way, maybe you continue the rebellion that your father caused. And so you pass it on as a legacy to your children. You understand? So what happens is you set in motion, and we're just speaking on the outer sense. We could speak genetically, you know, on people who have some genes are uh, hereditary, as they say. Some circumstances are inherited not genetically but situationally. You understand, like, why are these people born in that country at this time instead of this country at that time, so forth and so on. You understand? But in Yeshua, all of that is canceled out. See, all that's canceled out for the one who can receive it. You see, a lot of folks can't. You know, like somebody says you have a million dollars in the bank, you know, people would maybe not believe it, but they're going to try to make themselves believe it if they really think it's true. You see, you know, they don't know, but they're going to think it's true. They're going to all hope that, hey, that sounds crazy. You just play on pulling my leg. You understand? And if they give you little signs, not the full information, but they give you little indication that seem to be so, you will actually go to the bank and find out. You might say, oh, I feel like a little fool, but you, you, you know what I'm saying? There's a mechanic of faith that's working right there. What is it? Is it the person that told you that makes it more believable? Or is it the desire in you because you love money and you're like, wow, I love. So it depends on where you place your love. Like I was saying to a sister, saying just love needs a qualifier. We say, even in Rastafari, a lot of us say that love is the answer. That love is the answer. And, you know, love is, love is lovely, as the DJ said. You know, love is lovely and war is ugly. You know, what is that? that's nice rhyme, so forth and so on. But that's not scripture. Scripture speaks of, for God, the Abba, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And who is this son? It's Yeshua. Yeshua is the son of God. Now look how the devil and the deceived, deluded people are. They'll say, well, you see in the Bible, the Bible says, I've said ye are God. Do you know where that comes from? Do you know the psalm it comes from? Have you read the whole psalm? I've said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men and fall as one of the princes. Arise, O God, and judge the earth, for you shall inherit all nations. So you see, even in that psalm, there is this crucifixion process. You know what I'm saying? I've said ye are gods, all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men and fall as one of the princes. Then it says in the next verse, what? Arise, O God. So there's a, there's a resurrection. There's a rising. You understand? Some of our people are so beaten down by the Gentiles and white supremacy and the lies of the devil that they say that there's, there's no way out for this people. They, they've just given up. They just given up. It's like the, the old Babylonian Roman saying, if you can't beat them, become a bleed, expletive, deleted, deleted Roman. You understand? If you can't beat them, you know, then join them. 
And this is what has happened. Many have joined the side of the beast, even though in their hearts and their minds they know it's not right. They can receive, you understand, all the lies. They can hear about conspiracy after conspiracy and corruption after corruption. The government, or they promise this and they don't deliver it. And what do they do? They say, what can you do about it? Why? Because the people have guns and ammunition, and they're powerful. So we have to go along and, you know, just make our McDonald's money. You know, it's, it's interesting. So in such a situation, what should a righteous God do? Should a righteous God change that which that they have already, they've already received the world. That's why the Bible says if they don't receive us, it's because they have not received Christ. They have not received the Word. They have not received the Father. They have not received the signs. You know, there are signs in creation to those who are not on spookism. Those who are not on spookism. You can recognize that, that a creator had to create this creation. And you can see the difference between what, what man and mankind has created and what the Almighty you understand, has created. Now, if you think all of it happened because of a Big Bang or something, then you got to tell me what religion are you? Are you an evolutionist? You understand? You are evolutionist. You think you can evolve, you understand, into being a god? You understand? That's all a fantasy. That's, that's going back to the garden. That's the same old deception. We don't seek to be gods. We seek to be sons and daughters of God. We seek to return into our family, into the true family of Christ. You understand? Through, you understand? Through Christ, 